Hello and welcome back, and that is right, today we're going to tackle the age-old subject of old versus new. A number of you may be looking at buying yourself a brand new NAS, and right now, at the time of recording, in summer of 2022, there is a lot of old and not a lot of new, and a number of you are sitting there kind of nursing your wallets or your purses and wondering right now should I take the plunge and buy an existing or even older generation network attached storage device or should I continue holding out until some new stuff arrives I mentioned summer 2022 because a number of people right now are just not going on holiday they're sitting there with some expenditure they're sitting there with some money in the bank and they are just thinking Do you know what I want to treat myself to a new toy something for the home for the office for what Ever. So today I'm going to give you five reasons why you want to buy an old NAS and five reasons why you want to go for a new one. Let's go. That's right, it's painfully obvious, but one of the main appealing factors of buying an older NAS, be it old generation just gone or even older, is the price. It's so much cheaper. These uh, network attached storage generation device, uh, network attached storage devices, much like any kind of tech, when they arrive, they're at a premium price point, and as new generation units come out and technology moves forward, the price goes down. And the price of technology within two to three to even four years drops rapidly. Now, in terms of network attached storage, there is a slight difference compared with a lot of other technology, and that is that the software running on NAS is generally the same, something we'll touch on later on. But the hardware is what improves over time, and therefore, not only the newness of technology, but also the actual abilities of some technology get fallen by the wayside. But they all still do the same thing. Consequently, you look at NAS from as early as, you know, as far back as... 2000, uh, sorry, uh, 2016, 2017, which still run ridiculously well. Things like the WD MyCloud PR, uh, the PR uh, MyCloud Pro, which for Plex is still pretty darn good, although the software itself is a little rudimentary. Um, there are NASs such as the DS918, the TS453B. These are NASs now that are changing hands for two to three hundred pounds with their current generation alternatives knocking around for about five or six hundred that's a huge saving that you can plow into the storage media or the rest of your network connectivity so yeah going old you are going to save some serious bumps <laughs> Now this one is an odd one, but we've seen a trend when it comes to network attached storage in the last few years, and we're seeing fewer and fewer CPUs arrive on the scene that have embedded graphics. What does that mean? Well, um, that is a CPU that doesn't have a dedicated onboard component specialized in handling graphics. Now, when you talk about embedded graphics, most people think laptops trying to load, you know, crisis or something going, ugh, horrible. It's a different world when it comes to network attached storage. And embedded graphics is enormously beneficial when it comes to things like 4K and 1080p multimedia, when it comes to virtualization, when it comes to surveillance, when it comes to transcoding in Plex Media Server. And there are more CPUs released prior, uh, at least in NAS, released with NAS prior to about 2018 with embedded graphics than since. Indeed, you find more embedded CPU, embedded graphic CPUs in the older generation devices than you ever see in the new ones. And we're slowly seeing more and more brands releasing some of their mid-range solutions that prioritize the file handling and transfer going with embedded Ryzons and stuff like that than they are with Intel Celerons, Intel Pentiums, or even Intel Core. We're seeing more Xeons and less i5s and i7s on NAS. So going for the older generation, there is a greater range of embedded graphics processors to hand, and remember, at a better price point too. Now, this is more of the cheers to the community side of things, but older generation devices and their architecture are far more documented online. Now, 
a lot of people would argue, oh, it doesn't matter because the software is largely the same. That's not strictly true. The older generation devices, when you look at take Synology, for example, the DS um, six, uh, you know, four, uh, two, one, six generation, the one eight generation, or even the naughty, uh, the 20, um, uh, 2000 generation there. What you end up with there is a range of systems that have got an enormous body of GitHub, um, improvisations built for that CPU architecture, loads of guides online. You end up with lots of uh, efficiency being made out of the system by the likes of Synology themselves for their software to work within a certain architecture. They've spent more time wringing as much as they can out of those older generation processes there. The result is that the older generation CPUs and the older generation NASes have had far more time by both the brand and the community to get the most out of them. So buying an older generation device can often mean you can get more stuff done. I've said it like 10 times, but I think we should drill down into it. When you buy an older generation Synology, QNAP, TerraMaster, Acer store, it's running the same software as that of the newer generation devices. Now, it's not completely cut and dry. Synology have a certain commitment to certain architectures, much like QNAP do. It's a little bit more gray for the other brands. But when they release a system, they have a, a hardware warranty that they're prepared to cover that we'll talk about later on. But they also have that software support as well. And as they move their platforms forward to do bigger and greater things, CPUs may not be up to snuff 5, 10 years down the line. A Synology from 10 years ago might not run DSM-7, although some of them weirdly do. Um, but when it comes to those older generation devices, what you end up with, and if unless you go crazy old, like 2012, 2014 maybe, you can still run the exact same Synology, QNAP, Asus Store, TerraMaster software as you can on the latest releases from the brand. You're not missing out on a software level going for an older NAS, which I think a lot of people immediately think, oh, it's an old CPU, I'm not going to get the most of the software. You, you get all the software updates, the latest security patches, even if you go for an old system. It's only that you might have maybe a year or two's difference long-term supported software from the brand but we're still talking eight years compared to a decade or even more now this one's a little bit strange and it's talking about failures because buying an older generation device has a weird couple of inconsistencies with regards to uh, replacement and repair that a lot of people may or may not bear in mind. Now, first and foremost, if an old generation unit dies, you're more likely to find spare parts online on eBay and the like to replace it than you do with newer generation devices. Now, that is not a, that's not a closed book. Obviously, you're not going to be able to contact the official brand there to get support, really, unless you go to their official repair stores. QNAP have a whole repair store full of accessories. Um, but on the flip side, now, this is something a lot of people have talked about online. If you do buy an older generation device and it is new and you are buying it from a recognized retailer that just happens to sell the old device, there are still websites online that list the DS918 Plus released in 2017-18. If you buy that one and it's new from the retailer, your warranty's in. You have got that three-year warranty. Now, why is that important? Because in the event the system doesn't work or it dies, there is a 90-95% chance the brand is going to replace it with the new one. They're not going to have any old 918s knocking around. So buying an older generation device actually does weirdly open the door to repair and replacement options that are just not going to be there on the newer generation within the same time spectrum. And again, don't overlook the number of uh, replacement parts you can get for older generation devices online when people strip their systems and sell them individually 
forbid or just sell them as you know buy as seen but that's really it for the advantages of buying a new system there are a bit loosey-goosey some of them but of course it's not always cut and dry and there's some really good reasons why buying a new system will be advantageous to you let's talk about five reasons why buying a new current generation nas is going to be far more beneficial to you welcome to the world of tomorrow why do you always have to say it that way? Haven't you ever heard of a little thing called showmanship? Let's face it, it's the most obvious one. Newer generation devices take advantage of greater improvements in technological development. Ergo, they are traditionally more powerful and more efficient. Now, those are two little words there that don't quite mean the same thing. More powerful means generally higher clock speeds. They can do more. They'll take advantage of multiple threads and hyper-threading, but on top of that... They also have adva uh, taken advantage of improvements in efficiency. There, ergo, they get more done using less power. So you tend to find that the newer generation devices have got a higher clock speed and can get more done with that power under the bonnet. There is obviously the question of numbers of cores versus the amount of power and output and virtual CPU cores, but ultimately, newer generation devices tend to follow that framework of more power and get more done with it. Welcome to the world of tomorrow! Why do you always have to say it that way? Haven't you ever heard of a little thing called showmanship? Yes, another slightly quasi one, but newer generation devices are so, 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 so much easier to expand. Now, by expand, what I mean is attaching an official or third-party expansion chassis to the system. Now, in the case of Synology, they take advantage of that eSATA expansion, the DX517. In the case of QNAP, they've got a bunch of um, USB expansion devices there. And again, Asus Store have got USB expansions, TerraMaster does USB expansions. However, when it comes to official expansion devices that the system will recognize on a software level, it's worth remembering that all of these brands have refreshed their expansion chassis every few years as better improved methods of either physical connection or expandability of that storage area on a mechanical and hardware level have improved upon. The result is, if you buy an older generation device, it's actually harder to expand it because a lot of those older devices only support the older generation expansions, the DX513, the UX series from QNAP, and they are really hard to find these days. They're not as easy to just pick up at the shops. They're certainly not available uh, brand new, and even the second-hand ones, expansions are not released in the same volume as most NAS devices by brands. The result is that expanding an old NAS is so much harder than buying a newer generation device where the newer generation of expansion devices are still readily available. Welcome to the world of tomorrow! Why do you always have to say it that way? Haven't you ever heard of a little thing called showmanship? Another one of those, only the new people are clocking it up, but newer generation NAS devices, and if you buy the current generation, you have a greater degree of support of upgrade. Now, what does that mean? Well, first and foremost, newer generation devices taking advantage of newer generation CPUs have more PCI lanes to play with there on the CPU. Ergo, there's more bandwidth to play with, and therefore you tend to find higher performing PCI upgrade slots there, uh, more M2 NVMe slots, and a better support of available memory slots as well. So you've got NVMe, you've got PCIe upgrades, and you've got memory upgrades there. So again, you have a tremendous means with which to upgrade that become available as you go for the newer generation devices thanks to those improved CPUs that are being developed. But it's more so than that. Those newer generation CPUs don't only benefit from a greater number of PCI lanes to spread across the system hardware and chipset. They also arrive with greater compatibility and support of improved network interfaces, HDMI outputs, USB ports, and more. Ultimately, newer generation CPUs are one of the bigger reasons why newer generation devices have better ports and connections. It's not just the breadth of PCI lanes that can be played with, but also it's the literal support of different file protocols that it brings to the table. Welcome to the world of tomorrow! Why do you always have to say it that way? Haven't you ever heard of a little thing called showmanship? And finally, this I know this won't appeal to everyone, but it's an important enough point. 
power consumption on newer generation devices just gets better and better. We're becoming a lot more ecologically aware we should have been for decades and decades. But when it comes to servers being on 24 seven, power utilization isn't just about how much you're paying on the lecky bill these days, which by the way has really gone up. But on top of that, it is genuinely just how much power is being wasted. Now, newer generation devices not only taking advantage of modern um, uh, techniques of switching to standby and idle and super power saver mode and then waking up when needed or utilizing things like wake on land to go into high active access. But on top of that, the CPUs themselves being a great deal more efficient in their power usage results in newer generation devices consuming much less power like for like compared with their predecessors in at typical tasks now yes if you're flat out pushing that cpu because it has a higher clock speed then chances are it's going to use more power if you're trying to max it to 100 percent. but if you're not maxing it to 100 percent, then these systems just generally use less power because they are designed with that in mind less power means more heat generation less heat generation means more de less degradation on the parts and ultimately a newer generation device is a lot more not only ecologically aware but also just gonna hurt the electricity bill it's gonna give you a less to pay every month so ultimately the newer generation devices are just in terms of power and general efficiency a greater purchase overall but this has been should you buy old or new in in terms of NAS right now in summer 2022. I hate seagulls. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, do let me know in the comments. I'll hopefully make a NAS compare article on this as well because I think there are a few extra points that I've thought about during the course of this video which I think are worth annotating there on the article. So do check that out. But otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed the video. It genuinely helps me know what I'm doing right and I'm doing wrong and makes better content every time. And click subscribe to learn more about the newer generation of NAS devices as they are released throughout the second half of 2022. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.